But how do I now calculate the distance of 1, 2 with 5, 7 and 10? Okay. So there are two points, right? Which distance I take? Now, this particular question actually gives rise to different types of uh, hierarchical or agglomerative clustering techniques. So, one of the options is called as the mean distance. Uh, mean stands for minimum, not MEN mean. And, you know, there are two clusters. Each of them has four points. So, what you do is you find out that, you know, which two points are closest to each other. Okay, such that one point is from this cluster and another point is from this cluster. Okay, so, you know, if you look at the proximity matrix now, so if you calculate distance of 1 with 5, you know, it turns to be 4 and 2 with 5, it turns out to be uh, 3. So, you take a minimum of this. Okay, and that's how you calculate the proximity matrix. So, this minimum distance is also called a single linkage. Okay, why single linkage? Because we consider only one point when we calculate a single distance when we you know calculate which clusters will be merged okay option two is max distance as the name suggests you know here you calculate the maximum distance such that you know one point is from this cluster another point is from the other cluster such a clustering technique is also called as complete linkage because you actually consider all the pairwise distances to find out the maximum okay now uh, what uh, the distance matrix or the proximity matrix now changes to instead of this mean now we are using max of these distances okay so this is the change the third category is called as average distance in average distance you actually calculate the distance of each of the points with all other in the other cluster and then you take an average of that okay so this is called as average distance so here we have taken average of 3 and 4 okay and then uh, another method which is called as wards method has some similarity with k means so how it uh, you know calculates proximity is it looks at how the increase in squared error happens so once you start with all the points as individual uh, you know clusters so they are the cluster center. So as a result, the squared error is zero. Now you calculate that, you know, which merger increases the squared error. The squared error will increase. There is no doubt about it. But which merger, you know, gives you minimum such increase. So let's take an example. Let's say initially one and two are in different clusters. If they are merged, the increased squared error is one minus 1.5 squared plus two minus 1.5 squared. Okay. So, which will turn out to be, you know, each one of them will be 0 0.25, okay? And if you add them, it will be 0 0.5. And here, the centroid is 1.5. How do you get 1.5? It is just that 1 plus 2 by 2. And now, if you compare this merging option with merging 5 and 7, then the centroid is 6, and the increase in squared error will be 5 minus 6 squared plus 7 minus 6 squared, which is 2. Okay. So, you can understand that this merging option is much better. So, that's how Ward's method works and these are the most popular four methods. However, there are some other methods. So, let's just discuss one of them, okay, uh, which is called as a centroid method. So, instead of actually, you know, calculating uh, all these mean, max and uh, average, what you do is you take this cluster, find the centroid, okay, and then you find the distance between the centroids, okay? So that's how this method works. So this is a particular problem called as inversion, okay? Uh, so what can happen is that maybe you have initially merged D1 and D2, okay? And uh, then uh, the, the distance that was there between D1 and D2, after you have merged, the distance between the cluster with uh, the points 1, 2, has been reduced, okay? So it can happen that when you have merged two clusters in first step, if, you know, the distance is five, okay? In the next step, the distance is three, okay? So this is called as inversion. However, in all other methods, this doesn't happen. All right. Now, if we compare them, actually this mean method can handle non-spherical shape data. However, it is susceptible to noise or outlier. So we'll look at examples very shortly. 
Max is less susceptible to noise and outliers. However, their bias toward globular shape or regular shape clusters, circular shape clusters, and has a tendency to break large clusters. And average and world are also robust against outlier. However, bias towards globular cluster. Let's look at an example now. Okay. Uh, so before that, I will like to discuss some of the problems. So one of the problem is called as a chaining problem. So if you see, you know, uh, in this particular example, what is happening is that actually this cluster is very skewed. And as, you know, you are going on merging, you know, one point with another point and that point with the other point, so a chain is getting formed, right? So this problem is called as chaining problem. And this happens when you use this mean distance or single linkage, uh, you know, clustering algorithm. Also, there is another problem called as crowding. So crowding means that, you know, there can be a point which is closer to points in other clusters than to points in its own cluster. Okay. So here what happens is the clusters are compact, but not far enough apart. So separability is compromised. This happens in complete linkage. Okay. So now if you look at some of the examples, famous examples, so this is the concentric circle. So if you see, single linkage can very clearly understand that they come from different clusters. However, if you look at average linkage, complete linkage or word linkage as they have a tendency to find, you know, similar shaped or regular shaped clusters. Okay. So they have found clusters like this. The next example is again another famous example, which is your concentric moons. Okay. Half moons. So basically again, single linkage works very well. However, average linkage and complete linkage and word linkage gives you wrong or different type of cluster. This is another example where, where what happens is that single linkage, you remember the chaining problem, right? So, you know, it, it forms kind of a chain and then uh, uh, all the points come under the same cluster. Hi, however, average linkage, complete linkage and word linkage can somehow identify this different clusters, okay? However, you can see that in case of complete linkage, you know, the separation between the clusters are minimum, if you see very carefully, okay. So, this is the crowding problem, all right. So, you know, this last example actually illustrates you the chaining problem and the crowding problem. And these two examples actually tells you that how, you know, your mean algorithm is not going to find globular shape. Uh, clusters, which is a big advantage. Okay. All right. Now, one of the questions is that how do we find how many clusters are going to be there? So, uh, one of the things that you can do is you can look at the dendrogram and can draw a line like this. So, you know, uh, wherever there is a split, so now what will happen is that this will form one cluster. Okay. And uh, this will form another cluster. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, this is how this works all right uh, so there can be different uh, different techniques to find this distance but this is the basic idea okay uh, now about the overall hierarchical clustering or agglomerative clustering the time complexity can be at best o n square log n okay so that is one of the problems all right uh, and once a decision is made to combine two clusters it cannot be undone so this is one of the other problems no global objective function is directly minimized, so it is not like k-means. And different schemes have problems with some or the other type of methods or, you know, some can find globular shape, some are susceptible to noise and outlier, so all has some problem or other, okay? And uh, finally, uh, let's, you know, highlight one of the recent works from last three, four years. So this is, uh, this is a paper in expert systems with application one of the leading artificial intelligence journals and the title goes like efficient agglomerative hierarchical clustering. So where they, what they do is uh, they take a hybrid technique. So they cluster, uh, you know, by, by k-means first. Okay. So then they combine. So, you know, one of the problems was the time complexity in square log n. So if you cluster by k-means, your complexity goes down and then you finally find out that which clusters are, are closer to each other and then you merge, okay? So before we stop, so this is agglomerative clustering. So in agglomerative clustering, we where 
all points we start by taking in different clusters the opposite is called as divisive clustering so you start by taking all points in one big cluster and then you go by splitting them okay so thanks a lot for uh, watching this uh, video put your questions and i would try to go through them and answer you know if you have liked the video please uh, put your comments you know uh, like it subscribe the channel thank you so much for watching this video i look forward to see you in further video of this series thank you so much for watching